we're back. We're in the shop. Um, last week, I showed you that I got my new router. And at the end of the video, I told you that I like to have a larger base on my router. Which is what we're going to do today. So, here's our new base. I have a piece of quarter inch thick Lexan, acrylic, whatever you want to call it, plexiglass. So, what we're going to do is we are going to fit this on there. Give me a slightly larger base to work with and that'll make it a little bit safer. I'll be able to hold the outside as I'm routing to keep it a little bit more stable. So, guess we should get started. Here we go. First thing we got to do is we need to draw a line where we're going to drill a hole in the center because your router bit needs to come through somewhere. So what I did was took my veneers, I measured, or you could just use a regular ruler measure. That's the size hole that you want to cut. So in the case of this one, we are we're looking at about a little below an inch and a half. So I'm going to use a, I actually have an inch and a half Forstner bit that I'm going to use. This is like 1470 or something. So, and the hole underneath is a little bit larger than the plate that's here. So I'll show you how we're going to mark it out and how we're going to figure out where our center is. So I'll bring you down here and we'll get started. So first thing you need to do, we need to find our center. So since we have a square, first thing we want to do is we are going to measure, not actually measure, but we're going to go corner to corner. And then since we know roughly where the middle is, we're just going to scribe in the middle. We're going to spin it and we will scribe in the center again. And I don't know if you guys can see, but mm, mm -hmm. there's a little X there. So that center part right in the middle of that X is where we're going to drill. If you guys are wondering what I'm using, it's actually homemade. Um, when I used to work at the machine shop, it's an X-Acto knife. And it has one of these little spring holders in it. So I just cut a little ring inside of a burring tool and that's what I use to mark plastics and even metals. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to cut this on my drill press and then we'll be back and I'll show you how we get it installed and line up for uh, drilling the holes. Alright so we're back you can see I drilled my hole it's a little bit of a rough edge so now we're just going to deburr it you can use a file you can use sandpaper or in my case, I have a deburring tool. So, we go around it once or twice. Now we have a nice smooth surface. We don't have to worry about anything getting hung up on. Next thing we need to do is get our plate off of here. Thought I had the screws out far enough to avoid this step. So we take our four screws out of the bottom. And we get our plate off. And now you see we have a nice flat milled bottom there. So what we're going to do is, since we already have a hole, we're going to locate off of that hole. And we're just going to line this up over top of the hole. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just to give us a little bit more stability. We want to be pretty close though. And what I do is I put it down, take a look at it. I visually get it centered. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then what I'm going to do from the back end is I'm just going to mark what looks like the center of the holes, which should be pretty close without moving it. Then I'll look straight down at the whole thing. That one looks a little bit off. I want to move that one. 
make that, that one a little bit deeper. All right, so now I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but you see how I have four holes there? Well, four little divots. I don't know if you guys can see, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill them to the appropriate size. And all I'm gonna do, I'm going to go over to my drill box and I'm going to pull out a drill that is the same size as the inside of the, not the threads, but the actual solid part of the screw. And then that's what I'm gonna drill these four holes out to. And then I'll countersink them so that they'll be able to sit flush like that. So let me go get the right size drill and I'll get these drilled out and then we'll uh, come back and we'll get it put together. All right, here we are, we're back. You can see the four holes I have drilled. So I have one of them countersinked already. I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it. I'm gonna show you my way, then I'm going to show you the way that most of, um, most of you will do it. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that that's nice and flush. It sits nice and even with the top. That's what we're going for. So now I'm gonna show you the two ways that you can do it. And the one way that you guys will have to do it that'll be the easiest. So basically I used my set, I had a, like one of them pre-drill countersink center drill things that you can get. They come in like a, a set of four. You can get them on um, Amazon and everything. So I basically, I found the one that was the right size for this. So what I did was I basically just drilled through and then I would countersink it to a huh? little piece of plastic stuck in there. Piece of plastic won't come out. And then I would just keep going until I got to the exact depth that I needed. There you go. Sits a little bit below the surface. That would be fine. Just go ahead and creep up on it so that you don't countersink it too far and the screw goes through. The way I did it was I, <laughs> I have another homemade tool. So you can see how much nicer of a finish one has than the other. So I'll just go through and I'll clean this one up so it's nice and nice and smooth. I basically drilled it until I just got the countersink started and then that gave me a spot to be able to get this started in there. And then I did it by hand. And I would just go down one turn or two turns at a time until I got it perfectly flush. And this is the way I like to do it because you can really creep up on it. And you can really fine tune how deep you go. And this also gives a much better finish than using the drill bit. So you can see I'm almost there. I'm gonna give it one more turn. And there you go. I'm perfectly flush with the top. So now I'll do that to the other hole. And like I said, this way is a little bit easier to creep up on it. Um, what you can do is you can buy one of these countersinking tools, buy the cheapest one possible because they basically just work off of pressure. And then you can get yourself a little 45 degree angle or 60 degree angle countersink as long as it has the right size shank on it. Then you just put it in there and there you go. You got your tool that you need. And this works great for holes that you drilled. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these done and then I'll be back to you. All right, so here we are. You see I have the plate on there. You can see how the holes line up. I'm just going to drop the screws in. Then, I'm not gonna tighten them up until I have all of them, all of them in because we wanna kinda of put even pressure on them. Looks like my one hole over here was off a hair, but 
looks pretty good overall. Tighten that one down. Do it like a car tire will go across that way. Then over here. And you don't really need to crank down on these. You just got to snug them up. So there you go. You can see we have a nice flat surface. It's clear. The screws aren't going to catch on anything. And now we have a bigger base compared to only having compared to only having that we now have all this footprint for us to do on i don't know like if we wanted to do like cut dados or if we wanted to use it for like maybe a rabbit joint or a lap joint or something like that we have more room that we can work with the only problem with this is we're not going to be able to use our guide system but if we were going to be using our guide system, we have a much larger piece of material that this little foot would then be sufficient enough. This is going to be a lot for like edge type working compared to like middle working. So there you go. That's what we got. And for the most part, I think that's it. It's quick. It's easy. It took me all of about maybe 10 minutes if you take out me looking for the right drill bit and looking for my chuck key and all that. Yeah, it took me probably about 10 minutes. So guys, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions about this or, or if there's something I didn't answer, leave them down in the comments. And don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, get in your shop. Make your dreams a reality. Have a nice day, guys. See ya.